Visiting Japan for the first time will be a very exciting experience, but you might also worry, especially if you are traveling with your children, taking your senior parents, and traveling by yourself. As you might have heard, things work differently here, and also there is a language barrier. So in this video, I'd like to go to Tokyo's Haneda Airport and Narita Airport, so I can show you how you can spend fast one hour in Japan, from getting the SIM card cash to taking the right transportation to the city center from Tokyo's Haneda Airport, Narita Airport, and also a little more information about Kansai International Airport. When you came out to the arrival floor of the airport, you might want to go straight to the hotel as you are tired after long flights and you want to sleep. But there are several things you might want to have it done in the airport, so your four trip later in Japan gets much easier. There's one thing you lose as soon as you arrive in Japan, even though you have it in your daily life, like an air, and that is a connection to your smartphone. Having the stable connection to your smartphone makes your travel go smoothly, and there are three ways you can get a connection to your device. And one is to use your own carrier service. Your monthly plan might include the service in Japan, like international roaming service. Also, you can consider purchasing the international day pass if your carrier has that service. In that case, you can purchase day by day, but that can be a little bit costly if you stay here long. Another two cases is getting a SIM card or getting rental Wi-Fi. For SIM card, there are two types. The physical SIM card that you can get it out and put the one you can use in Japan inside, or you can get the eSIM that you can just type the number. So you can compare the price for the type of the data you like, and you can purchase and insert to your SIM card. Something you might want to be careful is when you bring your own SIM card, make sure you also get the pin so you can open the hole here. For a little more details, I talked about that in this video too. And there are lots of shops and uh, vending machines in the arrival floor and some in the departure floor. And another way is to get uh, portable Wi-Fi. It's called portable Wi-Fi or pocket Wi-Fi. Portable Wi-Fi is a little device that you can get reception from Japanese carrier and you can have the Wi-Fi all the time from this machine. It works with your laptop if you have and you can share with your family or in your group. In that case, portable Wi-Fi is a good device to have. The only thing is you have to carry this around and you have to return before you leave to your country. For both portable Wi-Fi and the SIM card, you might be able to find a little more better deal if you make a reservation in advance and you don't have to be indecisive or take time to make decisions at the airport when you arrive. In case you weren't prepared or you didn't have time to prepare, you can also get at the airport too. And now that you have a connection on your phone, something you might want to get in the airport is the cash of Japanese yen. You can use credit card almost everywhere, but still Japan is a so-called cash society and you might want to keep some cash of Japanese yen with you. You can get Japanese yen cash in the currency exchange shop, but for that you have to carry some cash of your currency, for example US dollars, Australian dollars, or you can also withdraw from ATM machine. In arrival gate, you see different ATM machines, and for example, in this Haneda Airport Terminal 3, they have the 7 banks ATM. You can get cash of Japanese yen using your cash card, credit card, or debit card. After you get connection and cash, now it's time to take care of your luggage. On the arrival floor, you see the different counter that you can send your luggage to different places. I personally haven't sent my suitcases to somewhere, but there was a long line and it seems like a popular service. So I thought what kind of case you would think of sending the luggage, because the luggage doesn't arrive in your hotel on the day, and usually it becomes next day. So in case you arrive Haneda and you are heading to the hotel in Tokyo, it's not really realistic to send a suitcase. It might be helpful in case you are traveling in a rush hour time, but you cannot get until the next day, so it's a balance of the pro and cons. In case you send your luggage, you always have to keep the important belongings with you, and also at least one night clothes or nightwears for that night. In the good case to send is 
For example, you are going to Kyoto on the second day. So tonight you are staying in Tokyo, but next day you are heading to Kyoto. In that case, shipping the suitcase from there is a convenient because when you check in the hotel in Kyoto, your suitcase is already there. So today and tomorrow, you can travel stress-free in Tokyo to Kyoto. But what about the case? You don't want to send the luggage, but you want to keep it in Tokyo. For example, you are staying in Tokyo for two weeks, but just in the middle of the five days, you are going on Japan and you don't want to carry around your suitcases because your suitcase is mainly for the souvenirs from Tokyo. In that case, there are two ways. One is using the coin locker. In Tokyo, many stations have a coin locker like behind me. Each of them has a different size. Uh, it usually starts from 300 yen or 400 yen and big one that you can fit suitcases about 800 yen per day. But something to be careful is coin locker is only up to three days. So in case you store your luggage at 10 p.m., it will be the next day soon. So in case you like to storage more longer term, you can use the service called Ekubo. Ekubo is a service you can make reservation. You can bring into the counters in the major stations. So with this one, you can store your luggage even two weeks or longer. There are two counters in Tokyo station. I found one in Shinjuku, which is located in the underground of the west exit. These are all a thousand yen a day. It's a little bit expensive when you keep it for a long time. This is the south exit of Shinjuku station and here there is a little capsule hotel called Anshin Oyado. And you can also book their storage space with the Ekbo and this one is 800 yen a day. If you just bring it here directly, they might not be able to take your luggage. You have to book with Ekbo for sure. So reservation is a must. So in case you move around the Japan with big suitcases, you might have some strategy when you plan itinerary. For example, taking the hotel near the station or trying to avoid the rush hour time. And all of these three services, Wi-Fi, cash, luggage, you can skip all of these if you either prepare in your country or use different service or not use it. And now it's time to go to the city center. Now let's see how you can get to the city center from the three major airports in Japan, Tokyo's Haneda, Narita, and Osaka's Kansai International Airport. Tokyo's Haneda Airport is not far from Tokyo city center. Most of the international flights arrive to Terminal 3. One of the Japanese airline company, ANA, recently started to fly some of their flights to Terminal 2, and they might expand. But at this moment, most of the international flights arrive at Terminal 3. The Tokyo monorail is a subsidiary of JR, and it takes you to Tokyo city center called Hamamatsucho Station near Tokyo Tower in 30 minutes if you take Haneda Express. If you take local train, it takes 18 minutes. Still, it's very close from the airport to the Tokyo city center. From Hamamatsucho Station, you can change to JR line and go to different parts of Tokyo, or you can also take taxi from the station. And for the private railway, it's called KQ. KQ has two stations in Haneda Airport. One is a Terminal 3 for international travel, and one station connects to both Terminal 1 and 2. The fastest train of the KQ takes you to Shinagawa Station, one of the major terminals in Tokyo that Shinkansen to Kyoto also stops. It takes you there in 11 minutes, but they don't run the fastest train that often, and usually it takes about 20 minutes by other trains. Both Tokyo Monorail and KQ is a regular commuter train, so you don't have to make a reservation for your seat. There is no limited express serving to Haneda Airport. From Haneda Airport, you can also take the bus to different parts of Tokyo. So I took this bus to Tokyo's Haneda Airport to Hayato Regency by the Shinjuku Central Park. And that was 1,300 yen, and you see several different routes to Shinjuku and different parts of Tokyo. But right now, they don't run the bus to Tokyo Station from Haneda Airport. So my bus was stuck in the traffic and it took about one hour to Shinjuku. But it's very comfortable. There's a restroom and also you don't have to worry that people get on and off on the way and your suitcase is safe in the trunk. 
The prices are 1,300 yen, and you can purchase either at the counter or at the machine. Next, let's see Narita Airport. Narita Airport is the major international airport serving to passengers going to Tokyo. Narita Airport has Terminal 1, 2, and 3, and Terminal 1 and 2 has a train station underground. In case you use a Terminal 3, which is a low-cost carrier's terminal, and like to take trains, you can walk to Terminal 2 or take shuttle bus to Terminal 2's station. Both Terminal 1 station and Terminal 2 station has private railways and JR lines. Night Airport is a little bit far away from Tokyo city center, so there's a limited express that you need to make a reservation, and that is Narita Express by JR and Keisei's Skyliner. Narita Express takes you to the Tokyo city centers, Tokyo Station, Shibuya Station, and Shinjuku Station directly. It takes about 90 minutes to Shinjuku, so not the fastest choice, but it's very convenient that you don't have to get off in the middle. Narita Express is 3,270 yen to Tokyo Station and 3,450 yen to Shinjuku Station. So it's not the cheapest choice, but for international travelers, and if you are returning to Night Airport in 14 days, you have a choice of getting the round trip tickets for 5,000 yen. And the price is same for whichever station you go. And in case you change from Night Express to other JL station in central Tokyo, the price is included in the pass. In case you use JL pass, you can get on this Night Express without any extra charge. For Keisei, the private railways, there's another limited express from Night Airport to Ueno, and that is the Keisei Skyliner. This is a private railway and not accessible with JR Pass. This Skyliner takes you from the airport to the Ueno station in about 45 minutes, and right before it arrives Ueno, it stops at the station called Nippori, which connects to the JR Yamanote line. So in case you go to the stations on the east side of Yamanote line loop, it might be convenient to take Skyliner because Skyliner is faster than Night Express and the price is 2,570 yen from Night Airport to Ueno. So all of these are a little bit pricey but there are also more reasonable choices for the access from Night Airport. For trains, there is an Access Express that you can take from Night Airport to the Tokyo city center. This is the other end of the KQ I talked about in Haneda Airport, and this goes to the Haneda Airport, going through the subway to Asakusa line. This takes you directly to Asakusa and other subway stations in Tokyo. So this is not a reservable seat train, but it is actually the fastest choice in case you go to Asakusa. It takes you to Asakusa in 59 minutes, and it costs 1,310 yen. It's really a reasonable choice. In case you take Access Express, you have to pay extra attention to the luggage because it's a train or the commuter along the railway used to. It also stops other stations, but this Access Express skips some station in the subway, like Kuramae, Asakusabashi, Higashiginza, it skips. So in that case, you can get off at the platform of Asakusa and wait for the next local train, the same platform. But the low-cost transportation is not just this Access Express. There's also a bus called TYONRT. This bus takes you from Night Airport to Tokyo Station directly for 1,300 yen. It takes about one hour and it runs every 10 or 15 minutes. It was actually very convenient. It has a restroom. They say they don't guarantee the bathroom, but both round trip had a restroom. And this is especially convenient if you use Terminal 3 because this bus from Tokyo Station stops Terminal 3 fast and this bus to Tokyo Station leaves from Terminal 3 fast. So you have your favorite choice of the seat. In case you take this bus from the airport, you have to go to the counter or the ticket machine and purchase the ticket. Usually located right next to the major bus counters saying low cost bus. And when you take from Tokyo Station, either purchase a ticket in front, of the, in front of the bus stop, or you can just get on with the IC card. 
When you get on from the night airport, you cannot get on with the IC card. Night airport also has a regular limousine bus from the airport to Tokyo city center's hotels. For limousine bus, it will take you directly to hotels in Tokyo or to the Haneda airport too. And that will be 3,200 yen. All the passenger in the bus is for airport users and also it doesn't stop in the middle. So, so I found it very convenient. The only thing is when you arrive in the weekend or some days you might see the traffic. So especially when you head to the airport, you might want to be careful. Now let's see a little bit about the Kansai International Airport. Kansai also has a JR and private railways and bus. Kansai Airport also has distance from Osaka city center and there are two limited express by JR and private railways. JR's Haruka take you to Osaka station and Kyoto station directly. It's 3,410 yen to Osaka station and 3,840 yen to Kyoto station one way. However, international tourists can buy a Haruka one-way ticket, specially sold for international traveler. That gives a big discount. It will be 1,800 yen to Osaka station and 2,200 yen, 2,200 yen to Kyoto. So it's a great, great value. Haruka is running every 30 minutes in daytime, so it's convenient to use too. For private railway, Nankai runs a limited express called Rapid. It's very symbolic blue designed limited express. It only runs every one hour and sometimes every 30 minutes. So it might be not be the most convenient way to use. But in case you like to take the train or you have the train coming soon, it's a convenient choice. The Rapid will be 1,450 yen to number including the fare. In case you just take the regular Nankai train, it will be 930 yen from Kansai airport to Nankai's number station. There is also airport bus from Kansai airport. For Osaka station, it will be 1,600 yen and for Kyoto, it will be 2,600 yen. In case you use JR bus, you can get on Haruka without any extra charge. So for Haneda airport, Narita airport, Kansai airport, all train station has a JR counter that you can receive JR pass. So in case you like to receive JR pass on the day you arrive, you can wait at the counter. And in case you don't use JR pass, you can just get IC card in Tokyo, Suika, Pasmo, and in Kansai, Ikoka. Each major region has their own IC card and you can use in other areas in Japan too. Not all the time, but mostly. And you might have heard of it too, but in Tokyo, the Suica and Pasmo is not on sale anymore. What you can use is Welcome Suica. This is made specially for international tourists. The difference is this one is last like 10 years or any time, but you need 500 yen deposit. So if you have been here before and you have maybe somewhere in your drawer, you can still charge and use it. But this one only does 28 days, but it doesn't have a 500 yen deposit. So something you might want to know is the whichever the money you put inside, like 2,000 yen, 3,000 yen, that money cannot get refunded when you leave the country. So you have to use it up. There are many ways to use it. You can use in the convenience stores, vending machine, almost any shop, even beefball shop, has the logo of the Suica or Pasmo. So you can just touch and purchase food or shop something. And this is the JL version. And private railways is offering the Pasmo passport in Tokyo. And this is private railway version. This is also IC card. And the difference, there's no difference. It's completely same. Only design and who issued the card is the difference. So if you go to private railway counter and the airport, you can get this Pasmo passport. If you go to JR counter, you can get this Welcome Suica. Some station of the airport has the vending machine, so it's very easy to purchase Welcome Suica. Japanese person cannot get it, so I got it from my friend. But in case you enter from Kansai International Airport, they still have the regular IC card. So that should be okay. Thank you for watching. Have a great trip to Japan. Have a great week until the next video.